morning. Boy, my hair looks a mess. <laughs> anyway, I just like to do a quick video on the kingdom of heaven and how it relates to the courts of heaven or the kingdom of God and how it relates to the courts of heaven. And uh, there's actually about three scriptures that I want to share to start this off. And if you really want to find out about the court of the courts of heaven and how the kingdom of heaven relate, check into the Amplified Bible because the Amplified Bible is amazing in how it reveals the legality of the kingdom of heaven. So the first scripture is Matthew 6.33. It says, but seek, and this is Amplified, but seek by thinking, meditating, and reasoning to inquire into first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness justice or virtue which gives each his due and all these things shall be added to you so that's a really great scripture because it talks about justice and the kingdom of God is about justice and here, and then the kingdom of God is in you and the kingdom of God rules over all the kingdom of God is is the the government of God and the government of God is on Jesus' shoulder, and we are the body of Christ. The, the government and the kingdom, the uh, ruling thing of this earth is on us. And it all has to do with legality. <clears throat> if you look into our government, our government works by legality. Everything has to be done legally, following rules and laws. Well, there's laws in the kingdom. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of sin and death. And also... All of those things relate to the kingdom of heaven. Here's another one, Matthew 18, 18. We used to always think, okay, I bind you, Satan, in Jesus' name. Take authority over you in Jesus' name. And um, that's not really what it was meant or how it was meant to be um, done. It was meant like this. If I read it to you from the Amplified, you'll see what I mean. Let me see. Okay, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind. Okay, that means to bind, to put under obligation of the law and duty. On earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. So, those two scriptures in particular, I want to, or a few, whatever they were, I want to share with you because... If you look in the Amplified, or you take your King James and you look up each of those words in the Strong's Concordance, you will really begin to see how the Bible is a legal um, binding contract and how when we go to the courts of heaven, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, listen, I'm the government on the earth. God rules through me, and this is the law, and devil, you are, are disobeying this law. Now, I'm taking you to court, and... And take it to court. <clears throat> and when there's prayer not answered in your life, then Satan found a legal loophole on your part that you haven't uh, repented of some sin or there's something in your ancestors, you know, in your bloodline. And last night, I went through um, Bob Larson's list of repenting for um, your bloodline for oaths, for covenants, for false religion and a whole list of stuff that was absolutely amazing went through that whole list every list I can find I go through it but this morning from 2 to about 5 God was talking to me and I was repenting he took me back in in my own history of what I remember my things my mom said or my dad said um, that happened to them like my dad flew threw a flashlight at my mom and I always heard it was by accident, but then some people said it wasn't. So, so in my mind, I thought, okay, well, there was a spirit of anger or rage there, on maybe on my dad's part, and on my mom's part, maybe there was a spirit of uh, of uh, abandonment. She was, uh, you know, just different stuff like that. So God took me back in my personal history and reminded me of things that I saw, heard, and experienced as a child. And so uh, I repented for my parents. And I repented for myself. And, and this was hours long of repenting. And then this morning when I woke up, um, 
I was praying and I went outside and took a picture of one of the hosts. And I mean, he has these big things over his eyes. He's like eyebrows are big things over his eyes. I posted it on my courts, uh, angels, supernatural, courts of heaven and other normal Christian experiences on my, on my group. And I asked the angel or God, whoever, I said, what is the name of this host? And he said, striker. And I looked up the word strike. And the first thing it said is those who are on strike. But when I searched it more, it said somebody who strikes, especially military force. And so I thought that was really cool because the angels are the hosts of heaven that take on the enemy. They're the army that strike. They're the military of heaven that work for us as we speak the word. And so last night, repenting and everything, I thought it was really cool. And I got a really, I mean, it's a really awesome picture. Very detailed. You can see the detail in the eye. And you can see the mouth and everything. He kind of looks like um, like he's a, a, a black uh, person. You know, he has the bigger lips and the expression and such. So I love it the way the hosts of heaven look like Indians. They look Asian. They look white. They look black. I mean, they have... They look like lions almost all the time. Almost all my hosts look like lions. No matter what they look like, their nose and mouth looks like a lion. So I thought this host was pretty cool and that his name is Stryker. So um, let me share you some of the angels' names that I've learned. And then I have a few things, words that God showed me that are keys that I want to share with you. Um, so far, the Lord told me that the angel that I sent before me to keep the animals off the road to prevent an accident and prevent me from killing them because I love animals. I don't want to run over them. His name is Angler. And that's kind of funny because when you fish, you go and you get the fish and you pull it out. And when we fit, Jesus said we'd be a fisher of man. And, and so Angler is his name. And I guess he pulls the animals off the road so they don't get hit. And then Stryker was the one this morning. And I thought that was really cool. Then there was another one named S, too, and I can't remember his name. I have to look on my Facebook post and see what God told me his name was. Then my other angel, I think it's like my main angel or the head of the angels that protect me or travel with me. His name is Thomas, and that means twins, and I am the parent of twins, and there's several twins that run in my family. And then that, there was one more angel, uh, Angler, Striker, Thomas. Um, I don't remember, but anyway, I wanted to share you those names because I began to ask God's I said, I don't know the angel names of my angels and what they do. I see them and, okay, now what? So God told me to begin to ask. He says, you don't ask, you don't receive because you don't ask. So I began to ask what the hosts of heaven are. When I see a really striking host, I ask what its name is. And I'm also asking to interact with it because I am partners with the angels. The angels minister to me. How can they minister to me if I don't have direction from them? I cannot be a partner with my husband. If my husband is in some other country and we never talk so I know great men and women of God that have uh, had fellowship with the hosts of heavens because they're part of their team that minister on earth and so I always ask those questions so anyway just want to share that with you um, when I take, take communion there's some certain words that God said that I should use to release things he said, uh, one of the things I said, talk about is um, how the DNA of God is in me when I take communion. Uh, the DNA record of everything that Jesus did on the earth and I want to receive. Uh, the Bible says that everything Jesus did on earth, if it was written in a book, that the books wouldn't contain it. But it is written in the DNA of Jesus and the DNA of Jesus is in me. And I want to have understanding of everything Jesus did on the earth, whether it's written in the Bible or not. And I have that knowledge because the DNA of God is in me and I have the mind of Christ. So I want to have that. And he told me when I take communion to say particular words like, uh, I speak to the DNA of God to manifest. So the word manifest the harvest that Jesus paid for me to have. He said, say the DNA to release the harvest of what the blood of Jesus paid for me to have. And whether it's written in the Bible record or if it's written on his DNA or if it's written in his uh, destiny scroll. All those things are available to me because I have the mind of Christ. And I said, also uh, say release, manifest, and produce in me the harvest that the blood of Jesus paid for me to have. In other words... Like if I'm sick or I have a physical problem, I say, 
in Jesus' name, the DNA of God, uh, as I take communion, uh, I speak to it to release the harvest of healing that Jesus paid for me to have. And and then I would just, you know, I would speak that, I would pray for that, and I would release it. So the key words were manifest, produce, and release. And then he said, take the DNA record that Jesus did, and uh, he, he died for everything that he accomplished on the cross, and everything that he, the DNA record, has everything that he taught on the earth and there aren't even enough books on the earth to to record that but the DNA has it on so everything that Jesus accomplished on the earth is in his DNA that's in me when I take communion to release that to my uh, spirit and to my understanding to um, receive everything that he did to have understanding and knowledge and wisdom of everything that's in the DNA that Jesus did on the earth that is recorded on his DNA to take that and uh, for it to be accomplished in my life demonstrated in my life taught in my life and released in my life so those key words so um, those are the key words that he told me to do when I uh, uh, pray and take communion because the courts of heaven communion and um, the kingdom are all intertwined and all related and and um, by having more and more understanding in all three of these things you, you'll begin to walk in authority and dominion and release heaven on earth in your life and everyone else's life so that's all I want to share with you today have a happy memorial if you are blessed by this teaching remember to share it with your social media sites and your friends and whoever um, hopefully it's a blessing to you and remember if you're an author check out robinbremer.net under the author thing i publish uh, christian books for christian authors i do all the light work 300 dollars in 30 days and the book is yours but anyway done with the advertisement um have a blessed safe memorial day and remember when you ask for your eyes to be open because your spirit being you should be able to see hear taste feel and smell in a spirit realm because you've been bought by the blood of Jesus and taken back to full sonship and everything the blood of Jesus paid for you to have is in you and is accessible to you. So uh, ask what the host names are, what their job is, what they're doing there and so on. And the more you think of something, the more you um, read about something or experience, the more you see something, it opens the door for you to experience it more. So when you want to go to the host, of, uh, when you want to go to the courts of heaven, Remember something you experienced while you were there before, and it will take you back in. So have a blessed day, a safe day, a fun family day, and enjoy. Be blessed. Talk to you later. Love you all. Bye-bye.